Hey guys, um, it's Smart, right? Um, here to discuss to you the KC Cup. Alright, so currently, give you an update, I'm at 33k. Um, so I was climb. I climbed up there early this morning. I was at about 28k, 27k. Um, so what decks did we use? I'm gonna go over the decks that we used to climb all the way up there, and that way you can get a good idea. All right. So this um, triumph is um, subdued for half of my climb, if that's the right word for it. Um, we're vic we're victim for half of my climb. All right. So I'm going to discuss the way I played them and why I switched to Triumids when I did. Triumids are one of my, I would say, two to three main decks that I use. Um, I've gotten multiple cogs with this deck before, so I, I felt that it was the safest way to go for um, some of the way. I knew there was going to be cogs with Floodgate and that Black Wings were probably going to be an auto loss for us, but... We faced a lot of Invoker, so I felt at that point, I by switching to Trimids, we would have the best chance to beat them. So, the, so I ran seven monsters in total. We ran the two Master, the three Hunter, and the two Dancer. I really like the Triple Hunter, and I really like the Master. Hunter is great turn one. It just really is good at getting your plays going and really accelerating past your opponent. Because once you get going, there's no way that they're going to be able to stop. It's going to be very hard for them to stop you once you have your monsters boosted to an extent. Then after that, uh, we have our three cruiser, three king golem standard, two fortress. The back row I ran was kind of odd. It was not odd. It was kind of it was kind of a tricky decision for me. I went with one floodgate, two mirror wall, one pulse, and three wall D. I thought we were going to see more Dark Lords than we did, so that's why I went for the Wall D, and I felt like if we were going to face Invoker Spam, we had four cards that could deal with it directly. Floodgate, Mirror Wall, Mirror Wall really good against the Cositis, because once they attack, you Mirror Wall them in the damage step while they have King Golem, and you, they go boom. Floodgate is also really good um, <clears throat> to shut down um, some Invoke plays as well, and then you can pop with the Master. And it's also good against the Mono Awato. Uh, Pulse is really good because this, you, this, if you open up Pulse, you have a chance against Black Wings. You have a legit chance to win. Um, unless they have like a second board. Because even if they hate Trinade, you flip this up and then you can interrupt their plays. So it's really good against Black Wings. <laughs> and the three Wall of D just really came in clutch. Um, some of the times you really um, bait out some really strong fields and then do attack in. Um, into a King Golem. Alright, if they attacked into King Golem, then I had the Wall of D to counter them. Um, really, really easy to beat them that way. I'm going to talk about the strategies of this deck now. Um, so, again, the, 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 um, the matchups that we had, we had several different matchups. Dark Lords, I really didn't see at all, which was kind of a deterrent for me because I was running three Wall of D. Um, the one six samurai match we did lose because he went first and opened up triple dual will. No, I don't kid you. And we lost to Ojama King, which is a random mean deck. But now to the more serious matchups, um, we played a lot against um, Invoke, which in that case you just want to wait for them to attack you and then use your wall V if they have multiple monsters on the field, mirror wall, um, and pulse to potentially blow up their monster, or you can floodgate it. And especially if they attack him with King Golem. They can't use their Alistair, so they have to use their Alistair in current beforehand, or it's a no-go for them. Um, against a mono, a mono is really easy for us to beat. Basically, you want to bait out their counter traps or floodgate their Amano Awato. If you floodgate them, they're just screwed. Um, if you bait them out and you get them into attack into King Golem, then they're just they're just gonna get their um, you're gonna be able to activate your trap cards, your wall of these, your mirror wall. And they can't use their counter traps once they attack. No effects can be activated. And that's a <coughs> generally a really easy win. Even if they manage to keep a mono on the field going second, it doesn't really hurt us not being able to attack, take out our cards because they're going just as slow as we are. So there's no real reason that they're going to speed up any faster than you are. So once you get King Golem out, it's really, really good. Also, you could try and bait out their counter traps by using some of your effects once you have an established board. They may misplay and then use some of their counter traps. Don't worry about the extra deck at all. Alright? So that deck got me from 7k to 18k 
and then from 27k all the way back to um, 33. So now we're going to switch over to my um, Ritual Beast, and I'll talk to you about how we play them. Now, interestingly, I was using the skill Restart, and I know it's going to come as strange for a lot of Ritual Beast players who are going to watch this, um, and because most Ritual Beast players don't use Restart. Most people are using um, Draw Since High Level, Ties That Bind, Sometimes Rare, Sealed Tombs. But no, we're using Restart. Why? Because we want to open up Elder Conahawk as consistent as possible. Plus, we're running a lot of different techs. We have Share the Pain, uh, <coughs> Shadow Mirror, Two Treacherous, and Regulation of Tribe, which I will get into in a second, and Lava Golem. So, when we have Restart, now the thing is with Draw Sentai Level, most of the time, we don't really need to use, um, you know, Draw Sentai Level. I found to be kind of useless. The reason why is... The only time that you'd really trigger it off is if you opened up Cyclone. And even in that case, most Invoker decks are going to go right for Purgatrio anyway. So, Lava Golem at that point, draw sensing it into it, it's not really that useful. Um, so, I just figured that if you run one of it, and if you really need it, you have it. You know, we were able to execute some dirty plays against um, Six Emrise. Any deck that will sit there and, and just keep attacking you, and wants to attack like Six Samurai... Dark Lords, you not only get stole them out, and we have cards to be able to deal with that, so Ritual Beast definitely really good um, in that department. We also we start running by three Spiritual Beast Tamer. Winda, Winda is crucial because Winda really is really good. They can't close your Winda, they can only close the tag out, so if they attack in the Winda, you still have the option to stall onto them until you draw your Shadow in Prison, your Treacherous, your Regulations. You just gotta be careful with Regulation because Black Wings could pop it, but. You may want to draw to your trash, <laughs> your share the pain. Also, if they, if you, if you're smart in the way you play, and you stall to get, you stall a Winda, you get another Winda on board, and then you're able to go Elder into Petalfin, and you use Petalfin to bounce their clothes, then they're forced to negate your Petalfin, and then you have, then they have to negate that rather than negating your tag out. So that could be really good. Um, but Blackwing's definitely really threatening. I did not use them because I was scared. I only have one Bora. Um, the best performing Blackwing decks I saw in the cup were run by Mike Tonic, my brother, and Chopper 200. Definitely subscribe to both of them and follow them. I am, um, yeah, they were both really good. And um, Chopper was running three floodgates, three close, which panned out for him really well, getting over that 40k. Um, next, we ran two Conahawk. Conahawk is essential. I really want to get my third. Um, but the Rampangu is doing okay for now, but I definitely want my third Conalog. But we did well enough without it. Uh, Petalfin, Rampangu, which can help you get your ambush early, even without Conalog. Um, so it's still really good, and then we have our Petalfin, uh, rounding it out. And Petalfin, obviously really important to bounce whatever they have. Three Tamer Elder. Elder allows you to go into your Conalog play, in which you go Elder Conalog. Banish the Apaleo, contact out for whatever, then unlike, then unlike your loop, you're just going to tag him out immediately, go back into Elder and Conahawk, use Conahawk's effect to banish your Winda, then you want to contact into your Conahawk, your ulti Conahawk, um, use your Conahawk loop by sending to the graveyard, by targeting your Elder and your Winda, you're going to send your Elder to the graveyard, special summoning your Winda and your Apaleo, and then once you have those two, you're going to banish Elder from the grave after you search. You're going to be searching Ambush. And then go back into Conahawk. And then send, once you do, you're not going to be able to loop this time because you specialed everything. You're going to summon your Conahawk generally in defense. And then send Elder and Conahawk to the graveyard to search a second Ambush. So that play is one of your mainstay plays. And you're going to have two Ambush to set them up. If you're going up against Blackwings, you don't want to set Ambush turn one because they're just going to pop it with right carry. Um, I view Ritual Beast as a tier 2 deck. I don't think they're tier 1. The only reason why I swapped out of them is because um, I felt like they were going to be too slow and they were going to force me too slow duels and I didn't, really didn't want that. Uh, regulation was key and then we also had Tretch and Shadow Mirror. Shadow Mirror to shut down um, Invokes. If we get this turn 1 with our restart, we could shut down their Alistair. So that could be very effective. And we also have Treacherous Trap and the Regulation, which can also be very effective text. 
Tretch is easy to te uh, use later on, even if we use Ambush, because if we use Ambush, then we can banish it with a Paleo and then be able to use Treacherous Trap Hole again. And you don't need three ulti of Paleo, I'm just running it to show off, but you really don't need it. It comes in every once in a really blue moon that you actually could use the third, but it really almost never comes up, so don't worry yourself about it um, by getting your third. And the final deck that we used in the KC Cup um, was this, and I'm going to go up to it. Was our Destiny Draw, um, um, we were using Destiny Draw with Invoke Magician Girls. Now this deck performed pretty well. Um, it got me all the way back to 25k. So we started out with Silent Magician level 8. Uh, you need that obviously with your Silent Magician engine, so three of that. Three Alice City Invoker, really standard. Two Chocolate, three Berry. Berry is insanely good in this meta because <laughs> if they use Red Curry, you could probably survive that turn. Um, so that could end up being really good for you. Along with that, we're also using Apple Magician Girl. Plus, if they attack with their invokes, um, so if they attack it with Magellanica, it goes to defense, and then we get to summon out our chocolate. Or, if, if the one good thing about this, too, is if you they play Burger Trio, they attack it to Berry. You, and you have a spellcaster in the graveyard, you can go for chocolate, and that will half it. Oops, didn't need to do that. Sorry, just fix that. So they can attack the chocolate if you have a spellcaster in your grave. Special summon it gets half, and that half is permanent. That's a permanent half, not to the end phase. Or if you don't, you can go into Apple, and then special summon one out of the end, and again, that gets half. Not to the end phase, it's like Gale, it's a permanent half, so that's really, really good, guys. Two invocation, because you need two. You cannot play one, they will cycle on it, and then you won't have a play left. Two concentrating current, because the reason why we play current, right here, they floodgate. When we floodgate them, it's kind of useless to floodgate them if we don't have a play that can follow up with the floodgate. Like, I always tell new players this. If you're going to go and use Floodgate and Canadia, make sure that you have a way to deal with their monster after you do that. Don't like play something. Floodgate's a little bit more lenient because Floodgate you could say, okay, well he's not going to be flipped up in the next turn, but especially with Canadia, you got to make sure you have an out to their monster. So that could be really effective. Now for the extra deck, I just pulled something, so I'm going to go ahead and insert it. I pulled this um, yesterday on, on stream, so go ahead and. Fix that up. Actually, probably want to fix your side is. <clears throat> All right. So we're running the double Purgatrio. You you could get away with one. You do not need two. I just ended up getting my second one. Uh, double Magellanica. Again, really good. And then double Cositis. So again, these are Cositis is really good for stalling. Uh, Burger Trio, really good just to burn them out with. Really, really good. And then we have our Invoke Magellanica routing up the scene. Really, really good just to beat them down with. Um, if you need to. So, definitely really good, your Invoke Engine right here. Um, Silence, really good turn one. You can negate their Invocation and their Cyclones. Really, two really big cards this meta. So, you definitely want to go about that. That's a good way to go about that. Anyway... Alright, right now I'm sitting at 33k, I am pretty, I, I am pretty impressed with myself, I broke my record, my record was 30k, um, I used to only get to 20k and stop, I don't really see too much of a point going on beyond here, um, of late I've been winning at about 70 to 80%, which I consider really good in this KC Cup, um, I, I, I am really proud of myself for breaking my record, um, I'm just going to open up two packs here, because why not? Yep. And that way I can go back to uh, just creating some really good content for you guys. I, tomorrow I want to come out with a video. I want to make a volume turbo deck, and that's going to be a really fun way to play Black Wings. Again, that's not the optimal way, but it's a really fun way if you want to go about it differently. Um, about playing Black Wings a little bit differently than what you um, have been um, accustomed to. 
Um, so, definitely a good way to play Black Wings. It, it's a different way than what you've been accustomed to. Um, so, if you want more Casey Cup reviews, go check out Stephen Freshy. Uh, he did really well. Go check out Chopper 200. Um, if you want some help on Casey Cups in the future, I can definitely help you out with that. Um, I'm also really busy today. That's another thing as well. So, I can't stream today. I, I have some things I have to do. It just came up all of a sudden. So, I won't be able to stream. I'm really happy about my 33k. Thank you guys all for who came on my stream and supported me during the Casey Cup. I love you all. You guys are the best. You guys, I said this before on stream and I mean it. That we do this together. We're a team. I might also try and stream on both YouTube and Twitch. So I might also work on that side as well. Um, so that's really good. Um, yeah, but we all do this together, guys. You guys support me. And that really gives me confidence. When you guys are here, you guys give me confidence. And that you guys believe in me. And that means a lot. Alright, so thank you. All of you guys. If you need any help with deck building, feel free to ask. I am, I do not bite. I am a nice guy. I'm a really nice guy. I can help you out with that. Um, I have no problem with that. <coughs> so, you know. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. Uh, Smart Ride, signing out.